Okay, so Chris, uh, <laughs> I am, I am, I'm curious about your main distinction of the right. approach to Bikram style yoga versus other um, okay. styles. So there's obvious uh, differences in their ethos when they talk about it, like they would. Bikra practitioners and teachers talk a lot about this is just the physicality of it. We're not getting into chanting and meditation and pranayama. There's a couple pranayamas in the thing, but they don't have a separate pranayama practice. And so it's very much oriented to come to the studio and do your practice here. And in some of his books, he'll talk about you can do a home practice if you turn up the temperature and, and you can vary it somewhat, but basically you stick to these postures and there is also an advanced sequence that you need to be invited to. Tony Sanchez came out with was one of his original students and came out with all of this, these poses from that lineage. It's the Ghosh lineage. If you ever read Autobiography of a Yogi, um, that's the Ghosh lineage. It's from there. And then when it comes to like how we were doing applied anatomy and in yoga postures, and I was talking a lot about active flexibility and keeping engagement of a particular muscle as you elongate it and go into the pose. And so when I do Bikram classes and the cues that they give, it's a lot of hanging on ligaments, a lot of hanging on the muscle tissue, a lot of, which is a way to stretch. It's, uh, it's called the myotatic stretch reflex. Basically, when you, the sensation of a stretch is a contraction. Why you feel a stretch is because the muscle is contracting while you're stretching it. And so it's kind of traumatizing a little bit, but that's just kind of what it is. And do that, hold that for about 20, 30 seconds, and there'll be a reflex where it'll give, it'll let go. It's not anything other, there, there are some things maybe with fascia or whatever, but it's basically the nervous system is signaling like, hey, you're not in danger, you can release. It was contracting because it was, the body was fearing something. And so Bikram seems to rely, the method seems to rely a lot on that. And uh, I think a lot of yoga is approaching it similarly. And then when you do like apply the heat and all of the soft tissue is, is softening. Uh, the thing I don't like about that is when you leave the hot room and your body cools down, like most things, uh, when it gets colder, it, gets, it shrinks, it contracts. And your body will not contract symmetrically because you have different tension patterns. And so it's very easy after the Bikram class to maybe pull Hurt something yourself. or injure something, which yeah. I've done several times. Yeah. Uh, and so in particular, when I said Bikram people don't do it like this, when they do the camel pose, uh, the cues, which is a, a script, so it doesn't deviate from that. The script is hips forward, push the hips forward, hips forward. And so you'll have the hips far in front of the knees and people doing these back bends. I don't know if their method is getting people as flexible or if they're just attracting very flexible people. Mm. They seem to attract a lot of ex-dancers, for example. And so you get these dancers that have tremendous back bends, um, but they're kind of wiggly noodles outside of like yoga. Like there's not, and I don't want to be rigid, but I want to be firm and stable, like as I move through the world. Yeah, I understand. So I haven't met very many long-time uh, Bikram practitioners. And those that I do, um, they're just, it's, it's just hard to relate with them. They're just, a, they're not so personable. And I don't know if it has to do with the method or if it's just the method attracted those kinds of people. I'm I don't know. sure it's a combination. So that's just kind of how I think about it. Like when they do things like the standing bow pulling posture, there's uh, a great danger to overstretching iliacus, like we were toning iliacus there. And I have felt that by pushing, as they say, just following their cues precisely as I do it, and then. Uh, it feels good in the moment, and I feel very loose and open, but then the eight days later I have inflammation in like my hip capsules and things mm. like that. And uh, maybe that can be resolved if I just keep going back every day and then I don't have to deal with the two-day after effect. Mm. But at some point, maybe I'll miss a day because of something life. in life happens yeah. or I get injured some other reason or whatever. And so I just I prefer my methods. I like the heat because of what it does to my heart rate. Mm -hmm. And so gaining control of my heart rate, I really like being exposed to that. But you can just do yoga outside. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Florida's really hot. So Bikram is really just the brand, right? It's the trademark, right? With his, like he, his theory. There is no such a thing as Bikram yoga coming from like India, right? Or like from ancient traditions. 
it's American version of or well Bikram is Indian it is he is Indian it's the guy's okay. name okay his name I, is Bikram okay Bikram Chaudhary and he comes from the Ghosh lineage so his okay. teacher is the younger brother of the guy who wrote Autobiography of a Yogi okay. who is um, I mean that's the most famous book on yoga in the world and you know the guy apparently performed miracles and things like mm -hmm. his Grandmaster. So his teacher was Bishnu, who was the younger brother of Yogananda. And so he subscribes to that a lot. And, you, there, you know, like there's all kinds of like controversy around him. And, and, you know, there's things that I don't like about his method. But it's undeniable that uh, he's exposed yoga to just hundreds of millions of people. You know, a lot of people have gained benefit from his thing. Yeah. And so, you know, for all the well, downsides... You know,